Hello and welcome to the Couple of Points podcast. This is a brand new podcast where we're going to be discussing uh, a number of topics from sport to life and all sorts in between over a couple of points. Uh, it's a pretty chilled back, laid back podcast. Uh, today I'm joined by a few of my mates. We're actually in Qatar um, and we're here for the World Cup. Um, so yeah, and I think that sort of going forward in the, in the new year, we're going to be looking to get a few interviews with a few guests. Um, but to start off with, we sort of thought, well, we're all coming out to a World Cup, so we might as well sort of show you how things are and, and talk you through it. Um, Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, we are going to be on all three of them platforms very soon. Uh, so yeah, get get your sort of follows in, get your subscribes in, and we will uh, make sure there's plenty of content for you going forward. Today I'm joined by Luke, George, and Thomas. I'm Nick Parr. I'm your host, uh, and we're just sort of going to go through the topics of uh, of the World Cup and, and what we think about Qatar. So, start us off, Luke. Uh, Qatar. How good has it been? It's, it's been a lot better than what we were expecting, I think. Um, obviously, back home, media uh, and whatnot, they've sort of painted a picture of what it was going to be coming over here um, in terms of expensive food, heavy-handed police, hot stadiums, and I think it's safe to say we've had none of that so far. I'm sure we probably all agree. Yeah. Uh, Tom, anything to add to that? Um, I definitely echo Luke's thoughts. I think back home, it's painted like you can't have a good time, you can't drink fan experience is going to be awful um, but so far we've been to pubs we've been to almost every stadium um, we've mixed with almost every set of fans and from the minute we've got here we've probably had one of the best weeks of our lives mm-hmm. so I can't imagine yeah so, so we're filming like we're, we're filming this pod uh, a week into our time in Doha um, we've still got another week left um, and so far I mean the, the experience that I've had has, has surpassed anything that I expected um, I think I speak for all of us when I say that uh, George, before we got here, what was the sort of like preconception from yourself? How, how did you think that things were going to be compared to what they are, and, and sort of how how has it been? I definitely um, echo kind of the thoughts so far, and that is completely different to what we expected. I always knew like we're coming over here. We're very lucky in the fact that we were staying in uh, an apartment with a friend uh, out here, so kind of we never had the issues or kind of concerns about what these little fan areas were going to be like where people are staying in port cabins and shipping containers and stuff like that so that was never a problem for me so when but coming into it I thought it's going to be it's going to be two weeks away no matter what it is it's a two-week holiday it's nice and hot that was kind of my starting point and we're going to see all these football matches so that was kind of I came into it like positive but not thinking oh this is going to be like an amazing world cup or whatever because of the things we've read in the media however after we've been here for a a week now, it's like next level. Like I couldn't imagine going to any World Cup uh, again and it being kind of this level of experience. Yeah, I, th- I think that's th- that. That is a very good point. I, I don't see how another World Cup could surpass what we've done in this week. I mean, so we- we've been to uh, pretty much every ground bar in uh, two so far. I think Lasalle and Alpha Mama are the only two that we've not been to. Um, but in that time, we've we've done eight games so far we've got another two guaranteed uh, potentially three with England progressing Um, and obviously we thought that sort of it was going to be difficult to get England tickets being over here out the way we picked them up one way or another Um, and and realistically I I think that sort of the way that people have been for us in Qatar I mean I, I was expecting all of the negatives of the British press to come to fruition be it Sort of everything's very pricey. The police are going to be heavy-handed. Uh, you, you go to you go to away games in England, and you are a target as a football fan. Mm-hmm. You've got a target on your back. You are a problem. Um, you come here, and I don't think we've seen any issues have we, at any point at any ground. I think there was maybe one flag taken away in the Iran game, and that's, that's about it, really. Yeah, we, we've seen one flag taken away, and we've seen one England flag that we bought went to the uh, flag. <laughs> um, evaluation area, um, but that was allowed into the ground for Australia v Denmark. I think it's just the Aussies trying to get a bit of revenge. But um, I, I think, sort of, fr- from the perspective of the fan experience, how could this have been any better? I think, like I said to you the other day, I think the only complaint for me is how far we have to walk 
yeah, from yeah. car parts the same yeah. that's, that's the only downside yeah it does seem it seems a bit crazy like they've had all obviously they've had all this time to they've built these amazing stadiums been incredible they've built very very good transport links with yeah. all the metros uh, the buses everything like from one place to another place it's easy to, so easy to get to in max maybe max an hour kind of transport wise to get to any stadium mm -hmm. um, the only issue is then when you get to the stadium you can see the stadium you can see the stadium maybe like uh, in the distance you know okay it's just over there however it's then like back and forth zigzag going this way around the stadium then coming back the other way around the stadium yeah. just to get there yeah. which obviously I can understand is a bit of crowd control going within that that they're trying to like spread people out if one if everyone's going on the same place to try and spread people out but yeah it just seemed a little bit crazy I, I, I th yeah to go. I, I think maybe a little bit of over caution perhaps from from the host nation thinking yeah. about the region they're in thinking about the threats that could be on on this tournament yeah. and i suspect that there were a few um but realistically that they've managed it well i, I, I agree with you I, I think that if they would have managed the control of crowds a little bit better the experience would have been more enhanced um, but ultimately by the same token it, it's a you know, it, it's a very minor point in, in, in the grand scheme yeah. of things compared to what we've been sort of hearing back home uh, where you know I mean, every, every bit of negative press that you could imagine seems to have come to fruition so been sort of gone against what, what the, you thought would come to fruition um, I, th I think that there was someone moaning last week about being too cold in the stadium <laughs> Oh, so oh, it's, Anthony, it's Anthony said it. It's um, just yeah. nonsense. Yeah. It's absolute nonsense. Yeah, I mean, there's air conditioning under your seats, but it's 30 degrees outside, so it's like it's perfect. Anthony, the player. Yeah, he said he was. The guy got, got in, he said he got injured. Well, not injured. He said he was getting a cold or something because of the air cons in the stadium. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. I mean, so if you can hear it in the background, obviously, just to prove we are in Qatar, that is a call to prayer. Um, that we're sort of filming just after sunset, so uh, a very common occurrence here. But it, it, it's so it's a predominantly Muslim country, and, it, and it's very much uh, lives by values. But it's very Westernised, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think, especially in terms of food, I think none of us have struggled to find places to eat, um, and going around the malls, going around a lot of the touristy areas. Um, it certainly doesn't feel like you're too far away from home, but at the same time, you've still got that sort of experience of coming away to another country. But you can tell that it's definitely had a lot of Western influence. Yeah, and I think, I mean, sort of, what was it the other day after the England game, we went to the mall at two in the morning, the morning and, yeah. and we were sat there eating a McDonald's at two in the morning Every shop was open. You could have gone in yeah. Hamlet's if yeah. you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. The surprising anywhere. thing wasn't the Mackey's been open because you get that back home also. Yeah, you hours, would, yeah. But then yeah. you've got a full shopping mall open. Um, yeah, and every single yeah. shop. Yeah. Every single shop was open. That's mad. So uh, I, th I think, I mean, going on to what Thomas was just saying there, the food, drinks, pricing wise, I mean, I was expecting to come here and be out of pocket. Mm -hmm. I was Absolutely. expecting to sort of spend yeah. an arm and a leg on, on everything and anything. Um, but it just hasn't really been that way, has it? I mean, I, I think that I've spent less than 500 quid, maybe, you know, in a week. I thought it was going to be maybe 75 pounds a day, 100 pounds a day. But if you go to London, for example, you can easily spend 20 pounds per meal and you won't get that much for it. But I think here we've been able to get almost every meal for under 10 pounds. Um, drinks, even in the stadium, one or two pounds for a Coke or a water or something like that. You'd easily pay double if you went to Wembley at the Euros. Yeah. So price-wise, it's been it's been, it's been spot on. on. It's been yeah. far better than we expected. Yeah, especially food in the stadium. I was yeah very impressed. At, yeah. Um, like we were having like a chicken swarmers or a hot dog stuff like that. It's about six quid, yeah. which you, you can easily pay more than that in uh, in in the UK at different football grounds. Although but if you go to Maidstone, you could get ten sausages <laughs> for six pounds. So you know every cloud does have a silver lining. Yeah. Um, but yeah, r realistically, I, I think we've been super impressed with sort of the pricing of things. I mean, everything you hear back home, and I have to stress this point, has been pointing towards this being a negative place to come, a very expensive place to come, and a place where nothing that is Western or has Western values is easy to find. Or welcome. I mean, I haven't missed pork. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, pork is not widely available here, but it's not like we've sort of been going around sort of not finding things to eat because we can't get a bacon sandwich. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think that's where some some of the sort of nonsense that we've heard pre this tournament has really been knocked back a little bit and I, th I think that I, I can't really fault any of it I mean so much western influence and so much sort of 
variety of food that you can go and, and get. And, and like I say, you just don't really clock it. It's not like you, you know, sort of get home and you think you've been robbed. I've said a couple of times, haven't I? It's like just driving through somewhere in America. Yeah, it does. It, yeah, it, yeah, it, does it feels like vibe. America. Yeah, it does. With Arabic vibe. on all the sides. Yeah. Massively. Um, so realistically, obviously we sort of we discussed uh, sort of Qatar as, as a place. I mean, with regards to the people, I mean, we've come across a handful of local people. I think sort of Qataris. There's, there's been a few that we've met, um, but like everyone seems so welcoming. They do, yeah. But even even the ones that aren't necessarily Qataris. Obviously, we said we've met a few, but a lot not of people live here. Yeah, people majority of people that uh, we've not necessarily met local as in terms of born and raised here. However, we have met a lot of people who now live here who have come over from different places around the world who have lived here for however many years and everyone has been so, so welcoming. And to be fair, to include into that is every person who works at the tournament, everyone for, yeah. from the people on the transport who are helping you get to the metro, from people in the stadium, stewards, uh, the kind of the police at the grounds and everything like that. Everyone's so welcoming. So What's your favourite metro to, champion? Um, oh, they're just all there. Uh, the I think just Metro this way has to be the the go. In, right? <laughs> the Metro this way, man. I mean, we had Ch Chesney Hawks for the England game on Tuesday with, with I am the one and only. But you, you can't fault their entertainment at half time. No. A man wandering around an eighty thousand pack stadium shouting Metro this way. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't get that back home. Um, but realistically, no. I, I think that yeah, ev everyone's been proper sort of um, just. Nice. I, I Everyone's mean, been very well. Yeah, yes. and, and you haven't felt like you've been yeah. impeding on, on their sort of uh, lifestyle or on, on their no. sort of patch. You know, you feel like they wanted you here, which again, a you lot of... You don't get that at home either. No, you don't they don't want welcome. football fans to yeah. do that. You don't feel welcome at football grounds in England. And it, to, it, add, to add to what George was saying as well, the police have been very friendly as well. Yes. I've not seen any sort of trouble. I've not seen any heavy handedness from the police. They're not sort of dressed in a way where they're looking timid in. They're just offering advice to fans, showing you where to go. I, th I think I've only seen one proper copper. This is what I pointed out to you. Because I've only seen one that's had like a gun or a taser or handcuffs. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of them are dressed like just sort of, you know, you think the so blended. Yeah. It's got like a high the police, police, police right Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's more like a security guard kind of vibe. Yeah, it's like you dressing up as a policeman for Halloween or something. Yeah. <laughs> not, yeah. To be fair, that was another preconception before the tournament. Obviously, I've seen... England fans go away to, this is our first World Cup um, yeah, yeah, for yeah. any of us, but obviously I've seen videos of England fans going away, whether it is to World Cups or whether it's just away matches, and you always, there's always on Twitter, you'll see something happen, there's yeah, all their fans, are, yeah, they're like fighting here, or there's, there's always this a flash happened, point, or yeah. the fans were arrested for this, or something like that, uh, and so you always, so it was always kind of a, never seen that before, Obviously, we didn't want to get involved in any of that, but we have, and literally, we've not seen any of it. We've not seen, as you say, a single person get arrested. We've not seen any trouble. Not seen, yeah. literally, nothing that looks like, oh god, the police are going to come here, or this is going to kick off, or yeah. nothing. Literally, nothing. Well, the other day, when I mean, we were walking uh, down the Corniche by the fan park, weren't we? And we were doing some filming some content, um, and there were like, there must have been four or five thousand people walked past us in that in that time we were yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, most of them absolutely steaming. Yeah. I mean, there was one guy who was Saudi Arabian. I don't know if he was a Muslim or whether it was against his religion. But he turned to me and was like, can I have a drink of alcohol? Mm -hmm. I was like, yes. <laughs> and I, th I think that these guys, because they're walking down the street, they were, they were very much like, not really sure what was going on. I mean, everyone was steaming. Yeah. There was no police around. There was no animosity. There was no issues. Friendly as well. Like, yeah. yeah. Steaming in a friendly way. And, and I think that that's been the biggest point about, about this sort of tournament is lots of people all in one place can have flashpoints mm -hmm. obviously France 2016 uh, Russia 2018 there's been yeah. incidents that are isolated where England fans have particularly been involved um, but here there just hasn't really been anything and if there has yeah. it's been dealt with very much silently yes. out of the way there's yeah. been no videos come out on Twitter no, either, it's been nothing. which is the main no. thing yeah, it's not even like we say, oh, we've not seen any of this, but it's not even that. It's like we've not even heard of it. There's no yeah. nothing on Twitter. Literally nothing. nothing. Like we would have, it would have been kind of out yeah. of it. This happened, but the it's press been haven't been able to print anything. Yeah. The papers, no. there's been no mention of England fans with bad behaviour. No. I think that's very much got something to do with how they've policed this all, haven't they? Yeah. At back end, you've got five, four, five, six thousand people coming out of the fan park. who are all pissed up. Um, you're almost guaranteed something to happen. A hundred percent, because they're too heavy-handed back end. Yeah. Yeah. They're here. They're, 
the yeah the laid back they're yep. letting you crack on go and do whatever you need to do yeah. and if there's an issue we'll then come in yeah, rather no. than we're going to come in and cause an issue yeah oh, don't get me wrong obviously fans back home sometimes they, they cause the trouble themselves but I think the policing's got a lot to do with it back home yeah um, alcohol in grounds I haven't missed it no I haven't missed it either it's, well, it's not there no it's not it's, but yeah. it's um, Blood Zero Blood Zero, yeah. Blood zero. Yeah. yeah I mean yeah, I think you need something like 21 gallons of Blood Zero <laughs> to get remotely tipsy so uh, personally I'm, I'm not going to be drinking any of it never mind yeah. that much um, funniest experience so far I mean I, th- I think I- I've got one which is uh, from that restaurant yesterday mm. Um, I think we had it's a, going to be hard to be that. Yeah, what well, was probably renowned as a traditional uh, sort of Doha restaurant experience when we were in the souk. Um, we, we went into what we thought was going to be a, a sort of normal restaurant and ended up with like an equivalent of 40 Towers. Uh, it was a performance. I think we all ordered very straightforward things. Mm-hmm. A couple of yeah. burgers, a couple two of pizzas. pizzas. Two burgers. Uh, the pizzas were vile. They had like some sort of strawberry jam style <laughs> base. Um, with a lot of cheese on top and then as many peppers as there are in Qatar it was just yeah. like the chopped up 15 it's supposed to be a meat peppers. pizza and it had more peppers on it <laughs> than you can buy in your local yeah. at least you got the right orders though yeah. well yeah. kind Could of be. halfway I mean but then you two I mean two blokes t- here, tell us the story Luke <laughs> well my, mine wasn't the worst fair. I ordered a Kansas City what was it called a chicken. Kansas City it wasn't, no it wasn't no, called it wasn't Kansas called. City chicken it was no. called oh. Kansas City cheese yes. oh, so right. which is like a me- meant to be like a standard cheeseburger um and the, wait- the waiter comes over, um, and he looks very puzzled, and as do I, because I can see a chicken in this burger, yeah. with no cheese, um, and just a little plain portion of chips. So then he walks away, and I think, oh, okay, he's, he's going to get the right order now. <laughs> he then wanders back with the same order about 30 seconds later after he's wandered around the <laughs> restaurant, not even asked anyone. doing laps. Is, is yeah. this the right food? Is the right? He just walked around with it. Um, hoping it's going to change to the right order by the time he gets back to the table <laughs> and then he tentatively puts it down like Kansas City chicken um, which it, t- it tasted okay in the end so I was like I'm not going to bother changing it but yeah yeah, yours is worse uh, yeah so I ordered well to be fair the first problem was uh, they we got down we sat down <laughs> the they gave us they gave us a menu they gave us just one just one menu for the four of us um, so I can't remember who was using it but one person had the menu and then there was a QR code on the table so we scanned the QR code. I was reading the menu on the online, reading the online menu. Go through, I found this uh, meatball sub. Um, so fairly standard on the menu. It was uh, meatballs, uh, marinara sauce, mozzarella cheese in a baguette, in a, in a sub. So meatball Pretty sub. Pretty easy, really. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. your normal sub weight uh, that you get in the UK. Uh, and then what eventually came was... A baguette, so we got the first part right. We got <laughs> so it's a big tig, really. And then inside it was just kind of like a, this mince, it was like mince meat, so what would be in a meatball, but kind of, it wasn't in balls, it was just like your mince, like from a bolognese, with, again, plenty of peppers in there, uh, just all mixed up in the sandwich. There was no cheese, no meatballs, and no marinara sauce. It was just this like meaty, like mincy sauce with this mince and peppers. So I said, I said to the waiter, um, about oh, this isn't this isn't kind of what I expect from a meatball sub, and obviously it's not got any of the mozzarella cheese on it. Um, so he took the took the food away, and then he came back like a minute later with my the same plate, and uh, but he brought uh, the menu over, which is obviously different to the online menu because he points at it and it says he says like oh look here it says it doesn't say anything about cheese. Um, but I was like, <laughs> but it said what it said in it was like sweet and spicy with <laughs> potato wedges um, and so I kind of questioned like yeah but it it doesn't even say meatballs on this uh, okay it doesn't say cheese but it doesn't was say it meatballs was a stress free holiday meal right? <laughs> yes <laughs> and then it also said it said uh, with wedges and I was like but the one you gave me didn't have wedges on it, like there's no so I don't, it's not this order either yeah. so I think the whole kind of menu everything everything on the menu was kind of they wrote a name and then they, the caption underneath was just completely different to the name of the the, I the think meal you they said made. Yesterday, it would be the equivalent of one of us for translating in Spanish yeah. for a <laughs> yeah. restaurant, and and it was like it was just utter nonsense. Um, it was. Close. And, and you order you're ordering things under the name, hoping that what you get might be related to the name. Yeah. 
uh, and that wasn't the case, which was quite outstanding. To be fair, I think we probably got quite lucky, and there were some dishes on there: eggs Benedict, <laughs> yeah. pears and pecans, and cheese and, mo- and um, cheese and maple, maple syrup. syrup. The classic English <laughs> breakfast, which <laughs> was grilled chicken, cheese, <laughs> mushrooms, and onions. Yeah, oh, mate, it's it's comfortably one of the best dining experiences yeah. I've ever had. Uh, they always looked so lost. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. very funny. One of my favourite bits was when we all ordered off the menu. The guy wrote everything down and then went over to a different menu, <laughs> lifted it up and started rereading the menu to double check that the egg existed at the time. It's, I mean, it, it was an experience um, and I, th- I think there was something that I, I, I wasn't expecting because you think in a touristy area of Qatar and, and of Doha, you'd think, well, they'll, they'll be clued up this lot. Yeah. And it, it was quite a nice decor it was as well. Nice. It, was, yeah, it, was it was really nice. nice. Yeah, it was yeah. a good vibe to the place, yeah. but it was just an absolute shambles frankly yeah, um, it was dire yeah, absolutely yeah. Oh, dire. but he, even I mean, well, it, wasn't, well, it wasn't cheap but I think you paid for the theatre more yeah, than you paid for the food <laughs> yes, um, sure. and, and the staff definitely didn't know each other which was just made it even better I think you asked for the Wi-Fi password three yeah. times I would ask yeah please can I have the Wi-Fi to one person and they go yeah no problem walk away like towards the desk and I think okay they're going to get maybe the code or they're going to ask someone for it <laughs> and then not they, it's not like they just come back and say oh, I haven't got it or nothing like that so they go away to the desk and they just never come back <laughs> never return so I'll be like okay maybe maybe just forgot about it you got distracted with someone else so just ask one of the other wait, waiters uh, who says yep yeah, no problem again just walks off and then we don't see him again and that, that, that happened literally three times where we asked for things and then literally just walked off and never came back and I was like okay okay I can Deal without the Wi-Fi here. We don't need it too bad. So. One thing I've quite enjoyed uh, here is the Uber drivers. Yes. Yeah, um, very good. I think by and large they've been very, very welcoming, very good. Yes, very. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, different sort of scenarios when we've been in, in Ubers, and I think that one where uh, it stands out was when we got in the car the other day. We were going to Al Janoub for Australia versus Denmark, and the Uber driver looks at his phone, types in what's, what game was at the stadium, <laughs> looks back at us and goes, you boys are from Denmark? <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, it, 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 I, we all went along with it, yeah. and then he offered us some chewing gum and allowed us to put the music on. But the, <laughs> the music thing has been pretty cool. I mean, like yeah. you, you don't oh, get Uber drivers cars, back home. Like, like you, that. Yeah. yeah, we've had Bluetooth kind of every yeah. kind of Uber mm-hmm. now. One well, of my favourite memories from this whole thing will be going from Netherlands, Qatar, to the England Stadium for England Wales and I was just blasting England. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three lions yeah. On, sort of on, on a road through the middle of the desert. Travelling through the desert like with your four best mates, England songs blasting on the way to England Wales. Yeah, yeah it doesn't get much better yeah. than that. Like um, the vibes were just insane. Yeah, and I, I think that's that's exactly it. It's like, I mean, apart from when he pulled over just to let like the king pass or whatever <laughs> it was, just close the whole road yeah. to someone important. Yeah. Probably David Beckham, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. um, Realistically, then, so I mean, obviously, Qatar it feels very westernized. Do you think you'll come back to Qatar? Uh, I could probably see us coming back. I, I, yeah, I definitely would. Obviously, I've been to I've been to Dubai before, and I've been to Oman. Uh, I've been to Oman like three times before as well. So, kind of these kind of areas, they're both very similar. I'd say Qatar. Qatar's probably more like Oman than Dubai, but you can see it turning into. Yeah, you can see it turning into Dubai where. There's just building, like every Uber driver we talk to is telling us like this wasn't here like five, ten years ago and it's just getting more built up and more big buildings, more uh, just more restaurants, more bars, like it's just getting more and more built up and yeah. you can see it becoming kind of a, a go-to destination really? because there's, the beaches are really good, the the restaurants, has got some amazing restaurants, the people are so friendly, obviously the weather, insane, yeah. this time, like for this time of year, the weather we're having, incredible, mm-hmm. so I can just see it being like very good it feels like a winter sun destination it feels like yeah. it's, it's going to go that way and it feels to me so uh, there's a lot of accusations that Qatar is only holding this World Cup for sports washing value to try and you know launder their reputation and make themselves a, a good country and, and it, you know sort of not trying to be uh, this oil state that secludes itself from the world but it feels to me like this World Cup whether they had it or not Qatar's going in one direction and that is to allow yeah. the world here but they're not interested in, in whether they've got the World Cup or not really. Like, it's nice they've got it, and it is a real sort of springboard for them into the next generation. But yeah. realistically, like it feels to me like this is the very start of something. Uh, like this is going to be like the next Dubai. I mean, they've got yeah. the infrastructure here. Yeah. They're building things, and I mean, 
golfing holidays, winter sun, <clears throat> you name it, and, and influences obviously that'll be the next thing. They'll yeah. all be coming here instead of Dubai. Yeah. What's the prices like here compared to Dubai and Oman? Uh, of Dubai is expensive, mm-hmm. so I, this is like nothing on Dubai in terms of like just going to. Obviously here, obviously alcohol is expensive. Yes, not more, not massively more expensive than it would yeah. be in London. To be fair, mm-hmm. obviously they have their, obviously their laws where obviously it's going to cost more. But in terms of food and just having a water in a bar or whatever is here like like fine like UK even probably less than UK prices yeah, yeah, for yeah, a water in a nice. bar or yeah, restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas obviously in Dubai the Apart from that restaurant are, yesterday where yeah, prices the soft drinks more, were cheaper yeah. than water. Yes, they were. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I can definitely see I can definitely see this going uh, a good way uh, for people to, to come here as a, as a destination and I definitely could see myself coming here again. Even the the buildings here we spoke about before are just insane. Like there's no building is the same. It's not like if you go to like Canary Wharf and you think, oh, all these big skyscrapers, like mm-hmm. it's cool, but like a very kind of similar vibe. However, here, no building yeah. is the same. They're like, huh. it's like each one, they're trying to go for an award for who's is going to be yeah. like the coolest or the the most unique design, everything. It's just every yeah. building just completely unique and different. And it's yeah, just all it's, cool. it's, it's been outstanding, hasn't it, on, on that front. And I think, I mean, I, I, I could see all of us coming back here. I think that like, if we're at a loose end looking for some winter sun, <laughs> Qatar's the place to be. I mean, yeah. we haven't really had a day other than today where we've been able to sit down and do absolutely nothing. Yeah. But this is better than like holidays I've had in Greece. You know, sort of even just chilled out by the pool, sort of go and have a coffee and a donut in the morning. Yeah, it, it doesn't get much better than this. It's um, very easy to get around as well. I think that helps. You go out somewhere, yeah, yeah. go out somewhere like Greece or Good Tenerife. Links, yeah. um, you sort of just stay in one place, whereas. The country's small, but it does have a lot in it. It's got yes. a couple of different cities, and they're only getting bigger. So and to be fair, adding on to the kind of to get around, the price yeah. of Ubers we've not talked about it's so yeah. cheap. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, for, cheap. for the Uber, uh, Ubers, they're so yeah. cheap out here, um, which is definitely enhancing our experience. Although obviously there is the metro, uh, there's the buses and stuff like you can get around easy enough as it is. But sometimes for ease of going from straight from our house to somewhere or for like to just, to just get somewhere quicker we've gone ubers and it's literally so so much cheaper than yeah definitely cheaper than the uk and they've even said that the prices now are more expensive now during the world cup than they were beforehand so kind of when the world cup's not yeah, on, i can't averaging, even imagine how much. i think what we're averaging about eight quid to yeah, central dollar, so, yeah. Yeah. which is i mean yeah. central dollars two, 25 average. minutes and i mean you think in england if you're paying eight quid in an uber you're probably getting to the end of the street. Yeah, especially in London. <laughs> as well. like yeah. Norway's an international city. It's not like yeah. we've come to yeah. middle of nowhere. So, mm-hmm. and even the ones when we've gone to Albeit right at the top, that's like 45 kilometres away. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's taken maybe like 50 minutes to an hour, and the Uber's been like 20 quid. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, five quid each. You'd probably pay that on the tube to go for an hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Never mind getting a taxi. Speaking of the tube, their metro system oh. shits all over the underground. Yeah. It's so good. Air conditioning, yeah, yeah. Clean. You've got people that actually look like you know they're not completely out of it. Yeah, uh, you've got people that sort of work there that have a smile on their face. Yeah, yeah. on uh, time. Very, yeah, very easy, oh, yeah. very efficient. You know where you're going. Like it's yeah. not hard to get off yeah. one line onto another. Whereas I think the underground. I mean, the biggest concern I have with the underground, and I use it often, is that unless you know exactly where you're going it's a maze mm-hmm. mate it is a yeah. total maze you can turn right and then left and be like uh, hang on that's the same line but the wrong <laughs> you don't see a station that you know yeah um so realistically i mean this is as, as good as it gets um, certainly haven't seen anything um in terms of people getting persecuted or anything like that everyone felt welcoming no matter who you are or what you look like um, mm. And the whole tournament's just been friendly. We've seen loads of fans mixed together, different cultures all coming together. So I can't say I can't say I've seen anything negative in that regard. No, exactly. So onto the football side of things, the tournament conditions have been, I think, nigh on perfect for football. Yeah. I think you look at past World Cups, Brazil, even Russia. They're playing in 38, 39 degree yeah. heat. Even France, 2016, France 2016. France 2016. So I think the, the reason why this has obviously moved is because summers here are 50 degrees Celsius. But realistically, like this is cooler than any World Cup probably for the last 15, 20 years, probably since Germany. Mm. And 
the, the, the football hasn't been bad. I think some players have looked tired. But it's probably fair to say probably it's just because it's mid-season and there's been a lot of games mm -hmm. in the last month for them. Um, but ultimately, like with regards to the uh, sort of conditions that you're playing in, everything's felt almost spot on for football. I mean, I think that realistically, like, there's not been any sort of games we've been to where I've thought, oh, this is going to be an issue today. Particularly with the air conditioning as well in, in stadiums. I mean, the only one where it looked like it could have been a bit of a nightmare was Wales via Ram last week. Mm -hmm. uh, it certainly yeah. went to Wayne Hennessy's head, that sort of. Um, but, but ultimately, it doesn't really matter for either of them two teams because they were never going to win the World Cup anyway. The air condition has been fantastic in the stadium. Yeah. I think everyone was a bit sceptical about when they were saying they were going to have aircon in stadiums and whether How's they could it going control to work the heat, roof, yeah. yeah, humidity and all that sort of stuff. But every stadium we've been in, it's been almost the ideal temperature. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's sort of reflected in the playing conditions. You couldn't really ask for better conditions. Because they've got aircon as well, they can effectively um, replicate the same temperature in every ground. So it's not like teams are too disadvantaged depending yeah. on whether you're. Like in Brazil, some teams were playing in really hot conditions. Some teams, it wasn't as bad here. It's almost. Didn't England play in the Amazon? Yeah, yeah, they in did. The Manaus. Yeah. Against Italy, it was mm -hmm. about forty-three degrees Celsius. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I, th I think if there's one thing we probably could say about FIFA is they could probably learn a lesson from from this tournament. And you wouldn't want it every four years because ultimately, I think you want it in the summer. Yeah. yeah. But realistically, I think for quality, you, you they could be onto something <laughs> because. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot nicer, and uh, you know, where they have World Cups tends to be hot, yeah, by yeah. and large. I, I mean, even when we've come from outside and it's been roasting hot outside, we come into the stadium, it's very, very cool in there, yeah. Um, you don't stay warm at all, and obviously, um, with the aircon, I think, yeah, it's a, it's a lot better than what, what we were expecting. So, stadiums have been good. Um, what's been your favorite stadium? You Our boys? Bite's definitely been mine. The big, the big Ten. Um, yeah, for those that don't know it, when you turn up to Albay, it's effectively, from the outside, it's a giant tent. Um, and then you walk through the doors, it's perfectly air-conditioned, um, and you you enter a 60,000-seater stadium. Now, just the whole novelty around the way it looks on the outside and what you get on the inside and the whole experience, uh, it's just a fantastic ground. I don't think we'll see another football stadium that looks like that again. Maybe potentially maybe in the Middle East but it, it just helps it shows the cultures coming together yeah. um, and it's just a fantastic ground you've got air conditioning under your seat temperatures perfect um, you don't wait too long for anything um, just a fantastic ground all around Luke I would have to say I'll buy it as well um, it's like Thomas said it's like you turn up to a Butlins um, and you go and sign this fat 60,000 seat stadium um, Although, having said that, I think all the stadiums have been class, to be fair. I've, I've, I've quite enjoyed all of them. Uh, I thought Al Janoub yesterday was actually very good as well. Yeah. It, it was like a mini Al Bite um, with the roof as well. Yeah. Um, but no, I think Al Bite for me definitely, definitely the best one. George? I, to be fair, again, really, the stadiums are incredible. Yeah. Like, yeah. They've obviously spent a lot of time, a lot of money building these incredible stadiums, kind of looking into what makes a stadium really good. So they've all been very tight there's obviously there's no running tracks around the stadiums yes. they're not really far away it's they not West Ham very, yeah. Yeah. they all feel very enclosed they all feel the atmosphere that adds to the atmosphere has all been really good um, I really I, I obviously again Albi it was incredible I also really like um, Education City I like that oh, stadium I, I quite like that stadium mm -hmm. but they all feel insanely modern uh, so easy to go to the kind of the concession stands and food and drink are so easy to get to and the queues are never that long yeah. Uh, again, aircon's incredible. Um, it's a, to walk, the walk to get to your seats has always been really easy. The walk to get to your gates is all really easy to get through, quick to get through. It's just been, yeah, all of the stadiums have been class. Yeah, and uh, I mean, from my perspective, Albi is uh, it's like nowhere that I've ever been. I think yeah, that's, I agree. That, that's the reason why it's my favourite because the others I can kind of see other grounds in them. So I think that like Lusail reminds me of Tottenham's ground. You, you look at um, Al Janoub, it, it sort of reminds me of any championship new build, like yeah. a Derby County or anything like that, a whole. Um, you look at, I mean, to be fair, 974 is unusual. I was going to say 974 yes. a shout out, because that, uh, that, that, that's, that's a really nice stadium. It's an impressive, well. really yeah. impressive yeah. brand. What they've done with the ship of containers and stuff, just walking around it, it's quite cool. Yeah, and, and I think, I mean, to be fair, the, the only issue that sort of 
was caused by that one was the fact that getting away from it was a nightmare. Yes. But ultimately, yes, that's true. yeah. But ultimately, from an architect, from an architect yeah, yeah. From, from a stadium perspective, it's incredible. Uh, they reckon yeah. that it's going to go to the twenty thirty world say, Uruguay, essentially for Uruguay if they win it. I mean that that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. that would yeah. be amazing. Like if, if we can go to Uruguay in six years' time, and go to the same stadium. We've eight years' been time. Yeah. <laughs> Between us, we haven't got any cash for that. Uh, eight years' time, uh, and and go back to that stadium, sort of half the world away. I mean that is something that I think would be incredible. But I think the one that I liked quite a lot as well, and I feel for the Welsh because they've been there every single game. And if you're a Welsh fan, you've come to Qatar. You've gone to three games at a World Cup. You've seen your team there for the first time in 64 years. Uh, but realistically, you've seen one football ground, yeah. and that's Ahmed Bin Ali. Yeah. Now, I didn't really like Ahmed Bin Ali in the day when we went there for the Iran-Wales game. I absolutely love that ground after England dismantled Wales <laughs> there. But not just because of that. I think that that little design on the outside of having the England flag, yes, yeah, just yeah. after the uh, after you walk out of a game where you've just thumped your nearest neighbours, and you just see like 20 England fags going around the stadium. Mate, uh, they've all got little quirks. So they've all got like little things that are about them that. It's not a copy and paste job. No, it's it, it, a lot and, of thought gone in and a lot of money to each one. Yeah, I, I, I mean, money's not been an object for them, but they've really sort of they've thought outside the box on, on some of them. And I, I mean, I, I just can't get around how good our bite is though I think England back there again this weekend so, yeah. Yeah. Um, which hopefully we get a ticket for because I would love one more trip to that big tent um, I think you said it when we first walked in last week when England played USA it feels like a shopping centre Yeah, and I think it is being turned into one yeah, which, you could definitely see it yeah I mean, I mean it, it, it's just like nothing else uh, I think that's the big shame about this World Cup is the fact that some of them stadiums are going to be repurposed yeah. um, which Obviously, they need to be if they're going to be used. Um, but for that one, like I say, come on, Butlins, put in a bid. Minehead, Skegness, Bognor Regis, Doha. <laughs> We'd love that. Um, so, realistically, um, is, there, is there anything sort of from you guys' perspective, fan experience wise, that has stood out above anything else? Any any sort of atmospheres that have, have really sort of made you, you know, oh, wow, hang on? Uh, I think the Saudis were impressive. Yeah, they were very impressive. I thought Iran yeah. were really good. Iran well. were very good against yeah. Wales. Our first game here, they were making a lot of noise, a lot of colour around, um, yeah. loads of flags, just really good atmosphere to be. Yeah, part. Saudi Saudi Arabia against Poland last Saturday, wasn't it? And um, that game was uh, obviously they lost the game, but I mean, all of the Saudis were like, I mean, they were loved you because you had a Newcastle yeah. shirt on. Yeah. Um, but they're absolutely like fanatical mm -hmm. and. and it wasn't necessarily what I would have expected from, you know, sort of 25,000, 30,000 Saudi Arabian fans. I, I didn't think that they would be A, as loud, because well, it was like a European away yes, game. Yes, it was, yeah. yeah. yeah it was like sort of going to Olympiakos or the Siktas, you know, sort of a, a Greek team where you're thinking, oh, hang on, that this, anything Greek, sort of Turkish, any, any of them where you think, oh, hang on, that they're not going to get the flares out in a minute. <laughs> and then it was, um, I, I imagine that was difficult to play against. Poland. Yes. Yeah. Um, any any sort of sort of fan experience realistically that stands out from a non-stadium perspective. I mean, I, th I think we've been to the fan zones. Um, I think the Corniche is quite a good experience. Just walking down there, even though it's yeah. not. Um, there's parts of it that aren't super football related, um, but some of it's quite, lot, tra quite yeah, traditional. Some of it's it? quite traditional, but you've got like screens up. Um, you've got a lot of a uh, few locals, a few a few people from teams that are playing or watching games just mingling there's sort of some street food around if you want it I think that's quite a cool experience if you want a mix of maybe traditional Qatar and the football coming together yeah I mean I, mean, I, th I think the thing for us was before we got here there was a lot of media attention towards the uh, sort of Indian fans that supposedly had been paid to come here or given tickets and there's been a few. We've we've walked into a few people that are sort of Indian, mm -hmm. and they've got like Messi shirts on or England shirts or whatever. But it ain't like they, you know, they are not the overwhelming majority. They're here because they love football. Yeah. There's, there's absolutely no doubts about that. Uh, and and realistically, like it hasn't felt like a manufactured World Cup. It hasn't. No. Like, South Americans have been here. 
we've had good conversations with England fans here, Welsh fans travelled in force, the Brazilian lads have been here in, in large numbers, the Argentinians, I mean, they're, they're incredible, but then you've got the Saudis, the Iranian lads. We've had, like, pretty much a mix of everyone here, and it's felt very authentic for me. Yeah, um, oh, absolutely. But I, I, I just think that, like, like I say, I mean, we, we had, um, was it the other one, the South Koreans, we had a good chat with him the other yes, day, and, yeah. and ev everyone sort of, I mean, it feels to me like England might have turned a corner as well. Because we have gone from being the most hated set of fans, national team, everyone hates our arrogance, to all of a sudden there's people that almost certainly 20 years ago weren't going to be saying that England would want to win something. There's been quite a lot of like, goodwill towards England, hasn't there? I mean, even, even the Welsh didn't mind us, although that's probably changed since Tuesday. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's been a really sort of good experience. I, I, I don't know if there's anything else from you boys to add about the fan experience. I mean, I, th I think that we've covered a hell of a lot of it with regards to it. And, and I, I don't know how many people are out here doing what we've done. I can't imagine there's that many. Um, because what we've done is pretty... I mean, you're not going to be able to do it again. There's no other World Cup. I mean, I feel for them influencers that are doing sort of all 64 games. Because although you can do it, I'm not necessarily sure I'd want to. Yeah. Obviously, well, well, we like we said yesterday, after two games in one day, yeah. absolutely knackered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and although you, like, you can go to the pub and, and have a few beers or whatever, some nights you don't want to. Yeah. Because you're just like you, you're getting in at two o'clock yeah. after a game, and, you, and you're thinking. Last I think thing it was I think last night when what time did we get back? Just before just before the last game, so just before ten. Yeah. That's the first time we've got back yeah. here at the same day we left. Yeah. yeah we always yeah. come back. Two, three, four in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And, and time zone wise, I mean, I, I've barely adjusted because of that. I said this to you boys, like, you're sort of getting up at 10, 11 o'clock every morning, and you're thinking, half, half the day's gone now, but you're not going to bed until 2, 3. If, if you've been to a 10 o'clock game, that's the only thing that has sort of like hamstrung us a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I guess it's because of the temperatures and, and the sort of Western broadcasters. But yes, that's it. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's been good and, and ultimately I, th I think that the experience has been very good. Uh, hopefully England can sort of go one step further this year. Um, 150 years ago England played their first international and that was yesterday so it might be written in the stars somewhere. Um, but uh, it, is, it is how it is and I, th I think that realistically from, from our perspective and from a fan experience perspective um, it's been incredible. Any sort of closing remarks from you boys? Any, anything that you want to add? No, yeah. just that I've really enjoyed the week so far. It's been perfect as a tournament. Couldn't really change anything in terms of the the setup, the what we've gone to, what we've been able to do. Uh, the World Cup totally has been insane so far, and we've still got basically a week left of mm -hmm. plenty more things. Yeah. Obviously, we're going to have a bit more time. We to need to do some more, more like Qatar, yeah, yeah, some more Qatar stuff. Like yeah. we need to go into the camels yeah. in the desert. We need to go and maybe beach. do some dune buggies or something yeah. in the desert. It's, I mean. We'll keep you updated on the more traditional stuff as well as the football um, because we've got plenty of content to come over the next few days and, and sort of from the last week. Um, but from, from us, uh, thank you for listening. Subscribe, uh, comment your sort of favourite moments of this World Cup. If you're on YouTube, like I say, subscribe. Uh, we will be on Spotify, TikTok and Instagram. A couple of points podcast. Thanks for watching. See you soon.